This video is sponsored by Dave.com. Let's face it, even if you're responsible with money, we've all had those moments where an emergency comes up out of nowhere and we're in a pinch for some last minute cash. It's happened to the best of us. In those situations, the Dave app can help you get out of trouble. Dave is a banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with their extra cash program. It only takes a few moments to sign up, and what I like best about their business model is that there is no interest, no late fees, and no credit check. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app and used extra cash to get help with things like last minute car repairs, bills, or avoiding overdraft fees. So if an emergency ever arises and you need a little bit of extra help, Dave has your back. Download Dave today at dave.com slash scaretheater. That's dave.com slash scaretheater. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve, member FDIC. In the year 2000, a website called filepile.org was created. If you visited the website, you would simply be met with a login screen. Other than a select few people who had login credentials, the contents of the website remained hidden to the public. The purpose of the website wasn't clear, but references to the site appeared in many places on the web. What lied beyond the login screen remains unknown, but many people tried to find a way to access it, and there were some pretty solid efforts put into trying. In 2002, someone on eBay was trying to sell login credentials to the website. Whether he actually had them or not is unknown. One of the more notable efforts to try and get into the website was from a blogger on a website called sfcitizen.com from 2008. He wrote a post about Filepile, and eventually received a message from someone claiming they would give him a valid username and password for the website, but only if they met in person at this location. Upon meeting up with the location, no one was there, so presumably they got trolled. The few members of Filepile that did exist seemed very keen on keeping the website exclusive. There are plenty of references to the first rule of Filepile, which probably sounds familiar. Don't talk about it. A lot of efforts were put into keeping this website obscure, so much to the fact that there were two attempts to create a Wikipedia article about Filepile, but each time they are removed because the Filepile members would create Wikipedia accounts just to report reasons their site should not be discussed there. There have even been instances in which troubles have extended to people who simply mention the website. In 2006, the author of a blog called We Moved to Canada noticed that she had new visitors coming to her blog from Filepile.org. She made a post asking if anyone from the site could share the post where she is linked, since she obviously couldn't get into the website herself. Shortly afterward, she claimed that she started receiving nasty emails from Filepile members. The first comment on the post said, Mentioning Filepile is asking for trouble. Now to their credit, the writer of this blog later received an email from a Filepile member apologizing for what happened, saying whoever sent those mean emails does not represent their community. All this has led to many people wondering what is actually going on inside the website that they are being so secretive about. One of the only places you'll actually see Filepile being discussed today is on the Know Your Meme page about it, where they describe it as being possibly one of the internet's biggest mysteries. The three main theories about Filepile listed here are the website is just a joke and there's no way to actually log in and nothing lies beyond the login page. The website is real but was shut down by the FBI due to an incident that occurred within. And finally, it's just a normal file sharing website that is very difficult to become a member of. Starting with the first theory, it looks like this was drawn from a 2005 Metafilter post where someone asked about the origin of a meme and someone quickly responded saying, shh, we're not allowed to talk about it, and included a hyperlink to filepile.org. This sparked a whole discussion about Filepile, and it really shows how little information was known about the site because everyone there seemed to have something different to say about it. One of the users commented, I'll be shot down for revealing the truth, but Filepile doesn't exist. It's an ongoing joke among alpha bloggers for the past four years. Some other people have similar comments saying, I'm pretty sure Filepile is a myth, and I have it on good authority that Filepile is just a dummy login page. I don't know on what authority he got this information from, but I have it on even better authority that Filepile was not just a fake login page. According to the Whois data for the website, the domain was created June 24, 2000. I found an archive of the website from October of 2000 that has text updates from the website creator, Andre Torres, being posted on it as early as July of 2000. 
So on the FilePile timeline, it's safe to say this is the earliest version of the website, which looks a lot different than the login page that we're used to seeing. This archive also includes a user guide that describes what the site was created for. According to this, it was basically just a file uploading site, and nothing more. What's also interesting about this version of the website is that you're actually allowed to create an account here. In the next archive from 2001, it looks like there wasn't even a required login at all. We can actually see stuff on the site for once. It's divided into a section for mp3 files, pictures, and movies, with an option to add a file to each section. Some of the files might seem questionable, like how to dismember a human.mp3, but troll posts like this should be kind of expected on any kind of site like this open to the public. The next archive is from 2002, and here we can see that a login is required again, but the option to create an account of your own is still available. Now I wasn't able to find any archives between 2003 and 2006, so this is a pretty big gap. But the next available archive was from 2007, and on this version of the website, we can see there is no longer an option to create an account. But we also know from the Metafilter post from earlier that the account registration option was removed as early as 2005, so it must have been taken away in 2003 or 2004. My guess is that it was taken away in either late 2003 or early 2004, because despite there being several mentions of FilePile in 2003, I couldn't find a single instance of someone mentioning the secret rule number one of FilePile until 2004. So this is likely when they went exclusive. And if we're looking into a theory that was constructed in 2005, we really only need the data up to 2005 anyway. So given the progression of the website that we've seen so far, especially with an actual sneak peek into the contents of the website, we can confidently say that theory number one is just not true. The second theory listed was that FilePile was shut down by the FBI due to an incident that occurred within the website. This one is a little more outlandish, but hey, leave no stone unturned, right? This rumor also seems to have started on the 2005 Metafilter page. A user posted this comment claiming, The site was set up as an experimental breeding ground for internet memes. Members competed to create the most pervasive memes. Eventually, someone went too far, and the whole thing was shut down by the FBI after they traced the origin of a meme that ended up affecting US policy. I can't disclose any details, of course, but suffice it to say, we were all surprised how far things went. The members agreed it was better to not continue, many simply felt there was no way to top that stunt. He's claiming a lot here, and doesn't provide any evidence that this actually happened. It honestly feels like he's probably just making this up. I sent him a message to ask for more details, but he never responded. The only other comment I found mentioning a similar event was this one. This guy says, John Devries came and he messed up real good. The feds were called. Now all we have are the memories. I looked more into this John Devries character, and judging from a comment he made regarding FilePile on the San Francisco Citizen blog from earlier, it seems like he had some sort of beef with FilePile, but saying this has any relation to some sort of FBI shutdown is still pretty out there. The biggest hole in this theory is that FilePile was never actually shut down, at least not in any of the years leading up to this Metafilter post. Like I said, I have archives from 2000 to 2002 that prove the website was still up and running, and although I couldn't find any archives from 2003 to 2005, I was able to find multiple instances of people in each of those years talking about visiting FilePile, so clearly it never shut down. Even today, the website is still up. It appears to be down, because if you go to filepile.org, it looks like the URL no longer works, but there's still a way to access it. In 2014, it looks like FilePile actually did stop working for a bit. The archive of the website at this point just includes a large wall of text updates. The first update on there says that during an upgrade, something went wrong, and he hasn't figured out how to fix it yet. In April, it looks like he was finally able to get things up and running again, but he had to move the site to a subdomain. A later archive reveals that this subdomain is 6.filepile.org, which is still up and running to this day, but there's still no way to actually make an account. I think that alone debunks this theory, but just to really cover all my bases, I got in contact with one of the members from FilePile. The San Francisco Citizen blog mentions a user named Anil Dash, who has been a blogger since 1999. In 2001, he made a blog post about FilePile where he says he's a member of it. Mind you, at this point, the FilePile website still had the option for anyone to create an account. I emailed Anil and asked him a bunch of questions, including asking about if the FBI rumor was true. He told me the rumor was nonsense. Finally, we're on to the last theory, which is also the most mundane theory. FilePile, which is an ordinary file sharing website that was very difficult to become a member of. 
Many times, the simplest explanation is the correct one, and this is no exception. This is the theory that I stand behind the strongest. The main reason this website became such an enigma was its exclusivity, and I think this can be explained very easily. I found multiple comments on the Metafilter post talking about how the amount of bandwidth being used by all the members was becoming an issue for Andre Torres. One person even mentions that their account even got deleted after a long period of inactivity. We also have this archive of a site from 2005 that states Filepile is maxing out its bandwidth and is hence closed to new members. This is all further backed up by Andre Torres himself. I found a blog post of his from the early days of Filepile where he talks about how he built the website. He says he built the site in just a couple of hours at work, and the original design didn't even have user accounts. He goes on to say, I thought it'd be neat to see how much bandwidth I could waste. It was an exercise in excess. I didn't even think about it, I just did it. This explains why the ability to create an account had to be taken away. The server could only handle so much, and I'm sure some of the members that remained felt special for being part of this now exclusive website, and of course, they wanted to play up that secrecy. While poking around and reaching out to as many Filepile members I could find, I actually received an email from one of the administrators of the website, and he explained a lot. First of all, he confirmed that the website was never closed by the FBI. He goes on to explain that when Andre first created the website, he posted about it on Metafilter, and from there it grew rather quickly. Back then, everything was hosted on a server in Andre's friend's bedroom, and it would often choke up due to too much traffic. This led to them closing down the registration form and making it a private community. The only people that could become members were close friends. Keep in mind, this was a long time ago, so we emphasize that the average age of the members on the site now is between 40 and 60 years old. These people formed friendships since the start of the site in the early 2000s, and the website is just one way to keep in touch. That's really all there is to it. While it might be fun to speculate that Filepile was some secret society up to nefarious activities, that just isn't the case. It was just a small project started by someone that turned into a private community for their friends to keep in touch. That's it. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the flip side.